Zoom has an open platform ecosystem. What does that even mean? Find out next. Oh man, I just, uh, you're wondering why do I have black tape on my hands? I, uh, it's first, first world problems. I, uh, was, was trying to show off uh, yesterday uh, <laughs> in front of my wife. We were playing pool. We have a pool table in our, in our basement, and uh, I was trying to just just break it so hard to get all the balls everywhere. And um, I reared back, and I let it fly, and I let it fly so hard, my finger hit the pool table and just scraped off a bunch of skin. So I had to put a band-aid on it, which doesn't seem to be holding today with all my typing. So I put uh, some black kinesiology tape to hold it better. Fun fact, I actually graduated a bachelor's degree from the University of Colorado with a kinesiology degree. And you're wondering to yourself, why? what does that have to do with, with Zoom and what you're going to talk about today? And the answer is absolutely nothing. It's nothing. It's just a, a tidbit of information. <laughs> All right, let's dive in. Harvard Business Review came out a few months ago, and I'll put the um, article in in the LinkedIn description or YouTube description, depending on where you're watching this video. And basically Harvard business review came back and, and basically said this, it said that the average knowledge worker, average information worker clicks between applications 1200 times a day, 1200 times a day, losing 9% of their productivity, which actually floored me at first until I started thinking about it. Think about it as an average knowledge worker, information worker. They're collaborating, they're doing lines of business applications, they're switching between Outlook and, and Zoom and Microsoft Teams and SharePoint and lines of business applications on maybe Salesforce and Dynamics on, and then browsing the web and, and checking their email and checking their calendar 1,200 times a day. 9% of their productivity is wasted doing this. Zoom wants to fix that. Zoom wants to fix that and automate business workflow, increase application affinity, which is a term. There's three different terms I've heard recently. Application affinity, context switching, and, and toggle tax. Those are the three terms that I've heard in the industry where it talks about literally the, the, the cumbersome use of all these applications. And if we can decrease that usage or decrease that, that context switching, we can increase productivity. Zoom is doing that four different ways. And we're gonna walk through all four of them right now. One, the first level is, is trying to automate business workflow and, and users work where data is, right? I, I heard that term, I think it was from my boss. He, he said, users collaborate and work where the data resides. And, and that really kind of struck a chord with me because now think about it through the lens of Zoom. If you're a Zoom user and we're talking about application affinity, what's the one thing you want from a business workflow perspective is to context switch less. In order to do that, you need to create a business in our open ecosystem that creates the ability for partners and applications to come into Zoom. And Zoom, when I say open platform ecosystem, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Zoom has the ability to create and deliver SDKs and APIs to partners to allow them to bring in their applications inside of the Zoom client itself, reducing context switching, increasing application infinity. And it does this a lot. Actually, last time I looked, it was 2,333 different apps can be deployed inside of Zoom. And these are anywhere from partner-driven apps to lines of business apps to really fun apps. Think about this as if you were a salesperson. Here's an example. If you're a salesperson and you were working in a CRM, I don't care, pick one, pick three. HubSpot, uh, Dynamics CRM, 365, Salesforce, those are probably three of the big big ones right there, right? Is, is now, what if we could bring that inside of the Zoom ecosystem? What if you were a salesperson, and I've done a demo on all three of these, by the way. <laughs> if you were inside Dynamics or Salesforce or HubSpot and you could use the Zoom application inside of that line of business application without ever having to leave and go to Zoom. You could stay in Dynamics and Salesforce and, and HubSpot and make phone calls, update records, update notes inside of that website, inside of that application, utilizing the power of Zoom. This is just one example of automating business workflow inside of Zoom with the open API and open SDK system that Zoom employs. The second way that Zoom's trying to solve this problem is by opening up with what they call Zoom Apps SDKs. And what that allows is application developers to bring create experiences inside of the Zoom product itself. 
Uh, it'll give you an example. DocuSign. DocuSign's an amazing company that's brought this ability inside of the Zoom client. And so I'll give you a workflow. Say you're in a Zoom meeting. You're in a Zoom meeting and you want to sign a document. Literally, you can fire up the DocuSign application inside of the Zoom meeting. You can sign documents inside of a Zoom meeting without ever having to leave. Think about the old workflow. You're in a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting or even a, even a Ring Central or a Cisco WebEx meeting and somebody wants you to sign a document. What do they have to do? They have to get outside of that, that application or that web meeting. They have to go to Outlook or Gmail. They have to then go to G Drive or OneDrive or SharePoint, upload the document. They have to send it to you. You have to then get out of the meeting, go to the email, sign, open up a DocuSign, sign the document, send it back. To That's a lot of context switching. That is the definition of toggle tax. Zoom is solving that with DocuSign just being one example. There's over 2,000 of those examples. That's a business workflow. What about a consumer workflow? What if you could bring, if you ever use Cahoots? My kids use Cahoots all the time at school. What if you could bring Cahoots inside of a Zoom meeting and ask questions and have quizzes? What if you could bring polls and quizzes inside of a Zoom meeting? You can do that now with the Zoom Apps SDK. What that allows is increasing application affinity and decreasing toggle tax, decreasing context switching, increasing productivity. Number one and two are kind of examples of how to bring lines of business applications inside of inside of Zoom itself. But what if the reverse were true? The reverse were true, like what if we could bring Zoom inside of your application? I'll give you an example of this. Zoom has a meeting SDK. And let's say you're a healthcare company and you are on your, your customers or actually your patients at that point are on your website and they want to schedule an appointment. There's maybe a yoga instructor, maybe you're a dog grooming facility. I don't know, pick whatever workflow that works for you. And you want to give your customers and your users and your patients and your, and your students the ability to schedule meetings right from the website. They don't have to call a receptionist or, or a, an IVR or an auto attendant. They can literally pick a meeting that works for them and their schedule and book it right on your application. That's exactly what the meeting SDK does for Zoom. It books it an automatic Zoom meeting right from that website transparently to the user. That's another example of bringing Zoom inside of your application. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could build a video app right inside of your application without knowing anything about video or audio? You can do that now with the Zoom Video SDK. And think about that workflow as well. Let's give you an example. Say you're an insurance company and your customers uh, are, right, are, are right on your website and they're, they have a question about a policy. Uh, and you can have the ability to chat, of course, or call a, a receptionist and, and talk to an agent. But what if right on that website it said, hey, video chat, immediately with an agent right now. You can just click on the button, start a meeting, and you can literally have a video and audio conversation right from the website, right from your application, utilizing the power and the architecture of Zoom. I think over the last 10 years, Zoom has shown that if they could do one thing perfectly, it is, it is Zoom and Zoom meetings. What if you can harness the power of that and put that right into your application? You can do that with the video SDK. That is the power of an open platform ecosystem, bringing your platform and your applications inside of Zoom and Zoom client, or utilizing the power of Zoom inside of your custom applications. You can pick, it's your choice. Those are just a few of the examples that I just come up with off the top of my head of how to harness the power of, of Zoom's open platform ecosystem. The ability to bring in applications inside of the Zoom client. The ability to harness the power of Zoom and the Zoom architecture and the development of Zoom as a meetings platform, as a video platform, as an audio platform, and utilize that into your architecture. Really, the sky's the limit of whatever you can come up with. Zoom just providing you the tools to do it. I'm a distinguished architect at Zoom. I am not a figurehead or a, a spokesman for Zoom by any means. Uh, I just like to talk about cool technology. And a lot of times that has to deal with Zoom. And if you like this video, please hit like. Better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have hundreds of videos where I talk about really all things Zoom as well as UCAS. I appreciate your time and have a great day. <laughs>